All right, folks, welcome to the Durham BioBlitz 2022 countdown session, where we're going to talk about some of our favorite BioBlitz moments, go over some cool superlatives, and talk about uh, the statistics and results for this year's BioBlitz. Uh, before we get started, uh, I think we're going to do some introductions. My name is Robert Meehan. I'm the water management specialist in de facto staff naturalist at the Ellaby Creek Watershed Association. And we're just gonna kind of ping pong folks here. So I see Audrey first. Audrey, you wanna introduce yourself? Hi everybody, my name is Audrey. I am an AmeriCorps environmental educator at the Eno River Association. And I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, Hillary, I see you next. Hi everyone, I'm Hillary Harrison, Director of Education and Outreach for the Eno River Association. Cool, thank you. Jordan, I see you next. Hi, my name is Jordan. I'm the Communications and Outreach Coordinator at LAB Creek Watershed Association. Thank you. Uh, Katie, I see you next. Hello, um, I'm Katie Henderson and I'm the Coordinator for uh, University and Community Partnerships at Duke Gardens. Thank you. And Constance, I see you next. I see you muted, Constance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find it. Yeah. Um, hey, everybody. I'm Constance Wright, and I'm the um, community organizer in um, Red Maple Park. So. Thank you so much. Well, we're uh, going to real quick just uh, do a quick rundown of what is a BioBlitz. Uh, hopefully some folks participated over this past week. Um, but if you haven't, a BioBlitz is a community science initiative uh, to help record and catalog the biodiversity of a given area. In this case, our given area was Durham County over the week of April 29th to May 8th. And what we're kind of trying to do is get a snapshot of the biodiversity during this week. What kind of plants and animals and other nature and wildlife are living in Durham, in our uh, local area, sometimes in our backyard, sometimes in you know uh, nature preserves or parks or where have you, wherever uh, nature and wildlife wants to live. We just wanna kind of see what's living. This you know not only kind of gets us closer in touch, I think with the nature, of our area, but also can provide some useful data points for scientists uh, who are tracking animal populations, plant populations, other trends. So it's uh, both, you know, just a kind of fun engagement event, but also it is a citizen science event. It, it, it will um, help science uh, on some level. So one thing I want to do real quick is just kind of give a Shout out to some of the partners um, that we've all been partnering with during this uh, BioBlitz period. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to Keep Durham Beautiful for hosting the BioBlitz webpage. You can always find it at www.durhambioblitz.org. Um, and we're just gonna run through all the partners real quick. Uh, and I know I'm gonna forget some folks, but Eno River Association, uh, Ellerby Creek Watershed Association, uh, Museum of Life and Science, uh, Duke Gardens, New Hope Audubon, uh, Durham Parks Foundation, the City of Durham, the Merrick Moore Community Development Corporation, the Red Maple Community, and the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, uh, all kind of partnered together to put on in-person events and, um, and encourage folks to go out and make BioBlitz sightings during BioBlitz week. Uh, so with that, I think I want to give some time to the group uh, and just have everybody talk about what, you know, was their favorite uh, sighting or uh, event that they attended during BioBlitz. Uh, and I can start, I had, uh, I think, two very memorable events for myself. One was a moth watch that we do every year where we take uh, a white sheet and a bright light and take it out into the woods and see what kind of nocturnal insects show up and we just had so many bugs show up. I was worried that I was going to swallow something on accident. Uh, there was just an incredible amount of life out there. Um, and then some really cool insects showed up and those, those are now cataloged in 
uh, the Durham Bio Blitz. I also had a really great time at the Red Maple uh, Park Plant Swap, which I think Constance may, may be able to tell us a little more about, but it was really fun to uh, interact with some of the kids that came out there and uh, who are just, you know, super passionate about, about, you know, finding bugs and, you know, other creepy crawlies and things like that. Um, so I'll just open it up to the floor. Anybody that wants to share uh, a fun experience that they had, um, and please, please do so now. I'll go first then. <laughs> Actually, I had two fun events. I didn't make it to the moth watch this time, and I kind of regret that, but um, the kids were like, you know, it, school was next day and all of that stuff. But anyway, um, the Catawba Farms um, event, I actually had my youngest grandchild with me. And to, to watch her in action, people would think that she was the most timid child <laughs> in the world. But when she got out there, uh, she wouldn't help build the uh, bird box. My old, my well, granddaughter that's always with me, Sanai, she built the bird bo uh, box for her. But what was really, really uh, inspiring about having her with me was she just kept talking about how much she loved nature. I love nature, Grandma. I love nature. So I said, well, do you want to go back, uh, go again? And she said, yes, I want to go back. So um, I'm going to email you, Robert, about the uh, rookery. But, uh, you know, if you see her in a different situation, you would think she could not turn her father loose or anything. So that was really, really inspirational. Plus seeing that grave um, site out there, 1700, you know, um, that was really interested, interesting. Uh, and of course my plant swap, that was, woo. <laughs> and I just thank everybody for bringing all the different plants, especially the perennials and all. I think most people really enjoyed those also, um, Jane, brought her perennials out there and she had them all labeled. I mean, the, she had them labeled and how to take care of them and the type of light and everything. So she had she had a lot of perennials and uh, of course my houseplants got gone, but um, Robert brought some, um, this couple, um, Doug and Susan, they brought some, another lady, um, forgot her name. But what was interesting was to hear how a lot of people who had been to a plant swap, they didn't know how it worked. And that's, that's the thing that you get. Most of them don't know how it works. So they'll come with maybe a small plant or they'll come with something that they think, you know, will work with a plant swap, but all at the same time, they're learning. But then in the end, they, they you know, loved it and then they are ready for another one. So that's, that was really, really um, inspiring to me. So, yeah, so that, it, was, it was good. Thank you, Constance. Oh, and the children with Robert. <laughs> he, he, he could open a, a camp quickly, you know, and, and they would just migrate to him because I think my granddaughter probably talked your ears off because every time I looked over there, Sanai was right <laughs> Uh, she, we had a great time and, and just congratulations uh, that event was so wonderful and, and uh, I think it's all due to your uh, planning and and the number I think the part that I liked is that people would show up with one plant and, and go home with five yeah you know? <laughs> yeah especially one of the ladies that's in the group she yeah. she was the main one who didn't she really didn't know but she actually came back but the highlight let me see if I can show you this uh, you, you know, it's always somebody that comes at the last minute, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know if you all know Fallon from the city, but she came like 10 minutes to two, her and her family, and she brought this plant, right? You know, I grabbed it first, okay? <laughs> but she brought this plant. It's, a, um, it's some type of peperomia. I'm, I'm not sure. I've been trying to find the exact name of it. 
but uh, she brought that plant. And what was so interesting about it, somebody had actually thrown that plant away. They put it by a dumpster and it was just hanging out of the pot. And her, her fiance said he got the plant because he loved the pot. I was like, well, thank you for loving the pot because I love the pot and the plant, both of them. But, uh, but that was really the highlight of the whole thing because you know now I have a new plant and I didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> that is, that's awesome. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Uh, is there anybody else who wants to share? I just wanted to say, unfortunately, we, we had an event that we had to cancel because of the wild thunderstorms that came in on Friday night. Um, but I happened to drop by Catawba Trail Farm and drop off some plants. Um, I had grown too many tomatoes and peppers, so I dropped some off. I told um, Miss Delphine there that I would bring them. And y'all were out there doing the bird box building, which looked like everybody was having a fantastic time. So I was sad. I had my dad with me and we couldn't, we couldn't stay for very long because we were heading off to lunch. But I wanted to stay because it looked like you guys were having a really good time. So um, I'm hopeful that folks will be getting up their bluebird boxes and be able to, to see some in their backyard soon. That was a great time. And, and thanks to uh, UCAN and uh, who I didn't mention UCAN. How did I not mention UCAN? UCAN was an excellent uh, and a very important partner in this BioBlitz. Um, and New Hope Audubon both partnered to put that event on. It was an excellent event. Um, Katie, do you have anything you want to share? I, my favorite things are, um, yeah, pretty similar to what everybody else is saying. I had a couple of moments um, at our programs here at Duke Gardens, just interacting with families who were stopping by. And I had um, a couple of kids that were just really fun to talk with. And uh, one of my favorite things to do for bio blitzes especially is just is like focus on a really small area and really notice how many things are right there. Um, and I had I had a really fun time um, with some kids who got really excited by that possibility of just like noticing how many different tiny plants were in this section of the lawn and then all the bugs that are inside there too and just how much is it was in these like three foot area um, and thinking about ways um, that they could continue doing that at home and, and all kinds of settings, uh, just noticing how many things are around us all the time. Um, I know for some people that's not as fun a thing to think about of all the bugs that are around us, but um, I, I really enjoy it with the yeah the different insects and plants and everything else. Um, so I, I've really liked um, finding other people, getting to talk with other people who share my excitement for just like digging down and exploring stuff, um, finding the things that are around us sometimes all the time uh, that we just stop paying attention to or really noticing the, the intricacies and nuances of what's there if you, if you really look closely. So I, I really liked getting to learn and explore um, with families that stopped by and got to like show me things that I hadn't noticed before. So that was really fun. I also got to um we had a turtle that was crossing our parking lot one day um, that i got to help get to the other side of the fence and that was pretty fun i learned a lot about turtle identification um, from a herpetologist yeah they, thanks to thanks to the experts that helped us identify these uh, uh various critters that we found turns out turtle identification very very difficult as i learned as well um great thank you uh is uh does anybody else uh, have anything they want to share real quick okay now we can go ahead and move on um to what i think is a really fun part of these bio blitz countdowns uh which uh several folks here helped work on which is a list of bio blitz superlatives some of the very the coolest sightings that we had over the BioBlitz uh, week and, and in some very fun categories. So I'm gonna go ahead, share my screen real quick for our rundown of the Durham BioBlitz 2022 superlatives. So let's see what categories we have this year. First off, we wanna do a uh, most colorful critter. This is gonna to go to a type of beetle called 
Oprestus salisburiensis uh, that a user found uh, near Lee Park, uh, Lee Farm Park in Durham. I think this is excellent because it's kind of glittery, glittery emerald colored and, um, and has some little rainbow bits in it too. Now these uh, beetles are a uh, type of family called uh, borer beetles. And there's a very invasive species of borer called the emerald ash borer um, that events like BioBlitz can help us track where these invasive beetles are. But this one is a, a native beetle and I don't think it's quite so destructive to our trees. Um, so that's why I kind of kind of chose this one as the most colorful critter. Um, I think it looks awesome. We move on to the next one. We're going to have the grossest organism that we found uh, over BioBlitz uh, is the dog vomit slime mold, which is a hilarious name. I, I think that uh, fungus people and, and mold people have the most fun coming up with names for their critters. This is a dog vomit slime mold. Pretty accurate uh, looking, if you ask me. I don't know if anybody's ever had a dog before, but sometimes you just you find stuff like this. Uh, and this one was seen over in Parkway Plaza uh, in Durham. Let's see what else we got. We got the most extravagant accessory. This is going to go to a glowworm beetle. It was seen over in Stanley Road in Durham. And it's got these enormous feather-shaped antennae on it that I think have must have something to do with finding mates on some level because there's no other reason for a beetle to have such enormous antennae than to help attract mates. Uh, I find these glowworm beetles fascinating and why, why they've got such extravagant accessories, I have no idea, but they look really, really cool. And I've never seen one yet and I still want to. So I'm always keeping an eye out. Uh, let's see, moving on, we've got uh, the most camouflage observation. This is a bug on a gall um, that if you look really closely to this kind of uh, gall mite gall or maybe a rust gall, you can see there's a bug up inside of it that is almost the exact same color. Um, I don't think this is the bug that's responsible for the gall. I think it might just be there, but at the same time, it was really hard to see. So it's really cool that uh, whomever saw this was able to find it. Maybe they didn't even intend to take a picture of the bug, but there it is uh, up inside the gall. The next one we've got is the most alien life form. This is a type of fungus called the hygroscopic earth star, which looks to me like it's some kind of, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Little Shop of Horrors slash, I guess, the musical but it definitely looks like this is about to uh, take over the world or become some kind of, you know, invasion of the body snatchers type thing. Um, these, these fungi look so alien to me. And, and I love whenever somebody is able to take a photo of them. Um, and I think we only recorded one or two during this year's BioBlitz, but they're really, really cool looking. Next up, we've got uh, best observation within an observation. And this is actually uh, something that I, is a photo that I took. And I uh, just want to uh, point out that I did not vote on my own photo. It was voted by the rest of the committee. So uh, no self-aggrandizing here. But I did take a photo of a very small beetle only to find that there were very much smaller mites on that beetle. So I was able to do two different observations with the same photo, one of the small beetle and one of the mites that were living on it, um, which I thought was really cool. And these are called Gamacena mites, which I did not know. So that was thank you to the experts who helped identify that one. Next up, we got the best action shot, which uh, was taken on Sayward Drive in Durham. This is a northern roughwing swallow. This is one of our migratory birds that shows up the earliest every year. And swallows are often very, very difficult to get a picture of because they're always zooming all over the place very, very quickly. But uh, this user was able to capture one in flight, kind of looking like a jet fighter. 
you know, slicing through the air. And I thought that was really cool. You don't often get pictures of swallows in flight like that um, because they move so quickly. So I thought that one was excellent. Next up, we've got the most commitment to an observation. And this uh, user Floundark over near Martin Luther King Parkway in Durham um, allowed themselves to be bitten by an Asian tiger mosquito in order to take a, uh, a photo of it, which is, I think, more commitment to an observation than I would possibly have because I dislike mosquitoes, at least our non-native ones. But uh, it's important, I think, to you know, track these non-native insects um, nonetheless because it's important to see how many of them there are. Um, so excellent job to Floundark for putting their, putting their body on the line for this observation. Um, I think next we've got a couple of observations that, oops, went too far. They're always fun every year. We track the longest common name, the longest scientific name uh, of any organism that was found during BioBlitz. And this year, our longest common name goes to the North American Tarnished Plant Bug, which is kind of a mouthful. And uh, almost a fairly unremarkable bug that uh, these, these kind of mirrored plant bugs like to hang out, um, as the name suggests, on, on plants um, and on flowers. And they have this year's longest name, which I think came out to 34 characters, I want to say. It was a very long name. Um, so the North American Tarnished Plant Bug is our longest common name. And next up, we've got the longest scientific binomial. This year goes to a type of fern, the uh, New York fern with the scientific name. Here goes nothing. Parathelepterus novaborosensis. I think I got through it. Uh, that's our longest scientific binomial. And I think that one came out to 29 characters. Uh, so very long names for both of these critters. Uh, and I think an excellent, uh, excellent way to cap off this year's bio blitz. So thank you all for uh, submitting all these observations. Thank you especially to the bio blitz superlatives working group for helping uh, decide which sightings we were going to go with. And I always I have fun with this every year. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Katie Henderson to kind of go over some of our results from BioBlitz this year and talk about our statistics uh, at the end of the event here. So Katie, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, thank you, Robert, for going through all of those highlights, different ways that we could, could think about um, all those kind of zooming in. And now I'm gonna zoom out um, a little bit and just give some um, big picture um, overview of, of what uh, we worked on as a collective together. Um, as we started out with, we've got a great community here of partners who helped to host the BioBlitz. We have a really an awesome community of participants. You can see all of um, our hundreds of identifiers and observers who helped to make all of these observations. Um, and then of course, we also got this amazing community of, of all of these living things that are, are part of um, our lives here in Durham and helped to interact with us and, and support these, these living um, networks that we all depend on and enjoy spending time out in. Um, so I just want to spend um, a little bit of time talking about this um, overview, just this big picture. So um, as you can see, so far, um, we have 3,370 observations that have been submitted. Um, and of those, we've got over 1,000 um, species that have been identified. So there is that if you like compare those numbers, that's a lot of diversity and unique sightings that people have found uh, within those. So we've been, we're doing a good job um, of like documenting all the variety in living things. Um, and 
I'll also note that um, over half of our observations in the BioBlitz so far are not, haven't been identified to the species level. So there may be even more. I think that number is probably even higher. Um, so that's just a little plug to, to um, help us keep working on identification if those are skills you have for any kind of, of living thing, um, whether it's plants or animals or fungi. Um, I don't know if we had any little microbes or, or other kinds of living things, but if there are, and you've got that expertise, please, please help us figure out what they are um, so we can continue to see how many different species we've got here in Durham County um, and be able to use that, that data for research. Um, another thing I wanted to point out from our overview, yeah, thanks again to all of our amazing participants that have done a lot of stuff, um, is this the map. So um, this is just another review of all of those thousands of observations um within durham county you can see the boundaries highlighted there and we've got sightings from pretty much every corner of the county there's definitely some that are are sparser um we tend to have a lot more observations where there's more people most of the time um but i'm really excited to see like we've got all the way way up on the northern border like we've got observations all the way around the county um so thanks everyone to help who helped to to make that happen um because that's one of the strengths of collaborative science projects like this is is we use the power of, of everyone together um to be able to pull all this data this is not something that anyone could do on their own so thank you um for helping us do all of that and then i just want to show um, a little bit of our statistics um as iNaturalist Kind of pulls them out to look at some of that biodiversity that we found there is a lot of different stuff that lives um, in our county so i'm i'm kind of focusing on this this little chart here um, that breaks things down by their scientific um, evolutionary morphological different categories that we've got um, so as someone who works at a garden and gets really excited about plants i was excited to see uh, we have a lot of plant species that have that were included um, so over 600 which is a little bit over half of all of our species identifications so far are plants um, and 600 is is a great number that's a pretty decent proportion of the the plants that are, are native to this area um, so that's exciting to see that we're we're like getting um, at a lot of the things that live here um, our next highest um number of observations is this one over here is our insects which are over a quarter of what we observed which also makes me excited as i mentioned before um, i'm someone who likes to to get really drilled down and look at those those tiny little things um some of them aren't so tiny but a lot of them can be um so we've found a ton of insects um other fun things like different mollusks um people getting into things i think we, we saw some aquatic species um, if I'm remembering right, as well as 45 different species of arachnids, which is awesome. Um, we've got reptiles, birds, mammals, fungi, um, other animals, the way that iNaturalist does it, that includes things um, like earthworms, millipedes and centipedes. Um, we had a couple of springtails, which are really cool organisms. Um, if you don't know much about them, I'd encourage you to, to do some research because they're really interesting um, and just the, the uniqueness um, that they come from. Um, and one other thing I'll add, so in here in iNaturalist, um, which is the, the primary um, like host that we used for the, the Durham Biolits, we've got 76 different species of birds identified so far. We also did a parallel um, project through eBird, um, which if you are a birder or someone who likes birds, you know that is where tends to pe people tend to put their, their bird settings if that's a thing you do regularly. And so far we've got um, 85 species of birds that are listed in there, um, thanks to Jin and New Hope Audubon for coordinating uh, that side of things. So um, just kind of shooting off some, some rapid fire stuff to point out this immense, incredible, diversity of, of living things that we um, were able to see. And I have a couple of um, highlights that I 
just want to show whoops sorry about that i lost my screen okay uh thanks for your patience always something um oops, sorry just pulling back all of my things that disappeared on my screen okay there we go um so one of the things I wanted to point out is that we've got a lot of observations um, of adults, um, of like grown up birds, um, like Robert was showing, or, or different things at the, the biggest stage of their life. But we've also got some in other, other life cycle stages. There are lots of caterpillars and other larvae that I saw. I wanted to highlight this one, um, which are some really tiny eggs found under a rock. Um, and I also want to point out, this is one that I don't have the identification skills to figure out what it is, and it hasn't been identified yet. So if this is something you recognize or can narrow down a little bit further, um, please jump into that. Some of these ones I'm going to highlight are not identified to that species level yet. But we've got these eggs. Um, we also have some variety in the like types. Um, some of these are just parts of, of different living things. So um, this is from a, a tulip tree. And it, it's the leaves and a flower that had fallen off of the tree. Um, so it can indicate that, that these things are nearby. Um, so it can be identified from just a part of them. Um, as well as similarly, um, this black walnut, it's the, the empty seed casing um, that you can use to identify that the tree is nearby or um, the seed had been dispersed from some somewhere. Um, so I think those are really cool. Um, we also have some, like I was saying, my, my go-to thing <laughs> is thinking about looking closely, thinking about those overlapping kind of observations. Um, so this is a, an oak tree, um, a species of oak that this person identified in their notes. Uh, but the observation that they're submitting is for these like little faint little spots on it um, that are actually a fungus, a parasitic fungus that, that lives in these leaves. Um, so thinking about how we can can observe things really closely. I really liked that. Um, and then also thinking about like different parts or signs of things. Here is a snake skin that had been shedded um, and left behind. So that's one, a different way that we can identify things that have lived around here. Um, similarly, here's a, an exoskeleton from a, a cicada that it left behind while it was molting. And we can do identify yeah, identify things, figure out what they are from that. Um, unfortunately, like Robert was mentioning, we do have some invasive uh, tree borers. And um, this is one that someone has identified based on the, the pattern of, of damage to the trees. Um, if they're thinking that it's the emerald ash borer, which is not one that we want to have here, but is good to, to monitor and be able to recognize. Um, but so people can use kind of these tracks and traces that things live behind. Um, similar to this one, there's some prints left in this muddy, sandy creek bank um, is another way that people use to make identifications. Um, this one is a sound recording, which is a cool thing that iNaturalist can do. Um, so especially with birds, like Robert was saying before too, it can be really hard to get clear photos of them uh, that can be used for identification, especially if they're far away, if they're flying. <laughs> um, I try to do that sometimes, and it usually is like a blurry mess somewhere in the background. Um, but we had a couple of people who made sound recordings and were able to identify the different birds um, based on their calls that are um, recorded. So that's a really cool one. Um, and then my last thing I'm going to highlight is we, we had a lot um of poison ivy observations it was one of our our top 10 or top 15 um, species i think so far and i'm just highlighting that because i am excited to see that people um are recognizing what it looks like and we've got now this this great um pool if you don't know how to identify poison ivy from site we've got a lot of different images of, of different ways that it can look um, i think that is one of the um one of the plant identifications I would suggest people learn first if you're new to plant stuff, um, just with how things are here. 
in Durham and North Carolina. Um, so I will stop my screen share there, um, but just encourage everyone who participated um, or, or who is helping us to make these identifications to just keep scrolling through, um, play around with that statistics function if you're into that kind of thing, um, because there's a lot of stuff we can discover here. And I'm always really excited to see um, such diversity in, in what's living here, especially in some of our urban areas where people don't always think about nature being around um, if you're not out in a park, but there's a lot of stuff that lives around us where, where we live um, and is really cool to see. I always learn some new species that I've never heard of before. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of fun exploring some of the statistics and, and thinking of this kind of community level of what all is living here with us. I will I'll pass it back to you, Robert. Thank you, Katie. Um, I just think it's so cool that we've uh, we had people see thousands and thousands of species in Durham County, which is just kind of, you know, an urban county with some uh, beautiful open spaces that I hope people get to enjoy more often. Uh, so now I'd like to kind of switch gears and talk about what's coming next. We've, we've kind of finished up this year's bio blitz. We're still going through some of the sightings and uh, running through some of the statistics. And that'll be done a little bit uh, later in the coming weeks. But I want to look forward now to uh, what's next. So we are going to keep doing these bio blitzes every year. The Durham bio blitz is going to happen every year. Um, I think we're going to continue to do it in conjunction with the City Nature Challenge, like we did this year, where basically it's a, a bio blitz that happens throughout the entire Greater Triangle area. Um, but in addition to that, every fall, we also do a bio blitz that's focused on actually a smaller area, just the Ellerby Creek watershed. So I'm hoping that folks will be able to look forward to the Ellerby Creek bio blitz this fall and then next spring again, look forward to the Durham wide bio blitz 2023. With that, folks, uh, I think we are all done with everything we wanted to share today. So thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, again, I wanna shout out all those great project partners that helped make this year's BioBlitz a, a, a huge success. Um, this recording is gonna be made available to folks uh, through various social medias. So uh, hopefully we'll, you'll see it shared on Facebook or Twitter or what have you. Uh, and y'all, we just hope everybody is ready to come back for next year's BioBlitz. So thanks everybody. Uh, and I think we'll see you next year. Thanks everybody. Bye now. <laughs>